What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Spirit Chronicles, and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you'll be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Spirit Chronicles episode 3. This episode was sort of like the beginning of an arc or the built up of a new or the real arc it seems like these first three episodes were just like an intro to the world to magic to different elements to this isekai and real in the beginning of the episode this episode they were talking about magic and i think this was the first magic lesson they kept saying that real couldn't use magic but we know he can from the first episode and if we remember Celia did like a detection thing and it showed that Rio had mana so he can use magic I'm just wondering if he was hiding it to you know hide his like trump card or to get unnoticed because it seems his magic is different they he he knew Rio knows that his magic is not the same as the others because he doesn't need to chant and such he just needs to replicate it and later on it's revealed that he has spirit <laughs> art spirit art so it looks like oh okay so it is different and maybe that girl that we saw in the beginning the first episode maybe she was a spirit and that's why she was able to be conjured up and go into Rio and input all those information in his head I'm pretty sure that we'll find out and it seems like his use of spirit arts is related to his ancestry people from Yagumo in this episode most of it was showing the students in Ryo's class taking a test it's sort of like a field test where they take in everything they learned fighting strategy war battle whatever you call that one and magic and they apply it to an adventure it i wouldn't call it an adventure but it sort of seems like they have to go from point a to point b all by themselves with no supervision <laughs> they just have to survive and actually complete it now something shady was happening so the way the story is going you can tell that everything's happening for a reason now remember that kid i was talking about the one that's the rival okay him He's in charge, and then there's like a second kid. He's sort of like lackey. He has like gray hair. He is the one that I predicted was gonna pop up. Do you remember on the last review for episode two, I was talking about how Celia's favoritism might cause harm to Rio? Well, she does have an admirer. It's the guy with gray hair that's the lackey to the rival dude. He has a thing for her and he notices that she gives Rio a lot of attention and he resents Rio. He's feeling some kind of way. So during this field test, he has a map and he's like, okay, I got my men from my kingdom to make a map where all the animals uh, are and we'll just follow that trail and we'll go through this test. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And people are like, really? He's like, yeah. And he's totally picking on Rio. And both him and the rival are like, okay, since you can't use magic, you're useless. How about you be the carrier? So he's the carrier. And then they follow this trail. They see goblins. Fortunately, they are prepared. They actually know how to do whatever they were being taught. It's, and I was actually impressed by the rival kid. He was a good leader. He has a lot of potential. He's just a butthead to Rio. And I'm thinking there's going to be a redemption arc thing for him. Like he's going to be an ally much, much later. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's going to be the case. So they fight the goblins. They're doing great. It seems in order to fight the best you can, maximize your abilities, you need to know magic, like body strengthening and such. And that's why they're always picking on Rio. Okay, now we know why he's pick they're picking on him. Cool not cool but cool that we know anyways going forward the 
map that they followed that the gray-haired kid had uh led them to a dead end it led them to a cliff and you know what happened uh orcs came about and they were fighting the orcs the orcs were throwing like these big ass spears and the gray-haired kid got hit by one of the spears it sliced through his thigh like not through it but like grazed it and he's like oh ow ow it looked like he's being super dramatic and he bumped into people they pushed him off and he eventually i guess this is for the story for the story's sake pushed the princess now princess flora was in this episode the second princess the second princess who got kidnapped was in this episode we didn't see her in the other episodes no we didn't but she was in this episode she gets pushed by the gray-haired kid she gets pushed off the cliff damn oh damn rio sees it he jumps off the cliff he grabs her and then they do like this nana aura thing he was emitting it and then transferred to her she was embodied it and Rio did like this magic he turns he pushes her and she floats back onto the cliff and he's like falling and it looked like he was using wind magic I'm like oh wow all right so this is why the kid got grazed in the leg so he could push Princess Flora and this makes Rio save her okay Rio is going to be acknowledged for this achievement right no 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 so they're able to survive this orc attack and uh, people are like okay who pushed princess floor what happened freaking gray hair kid blames rio so it's like oh okay rio's not going to be <laughs> acknowledged for his achievement uh this is going to be something to push him away from the kingdom rio is witnessing this whole thing how this story is being fabricated and he's like, okay, I guess I won't be graduating from this academy. He was looking at this as an opportunity to just walk away and do his thing. Cause like he doesn't really need the academy. I think it was it was just gonna be something nice to do, being able to graduate from school and have that credibility under his belt. Being able to say, well, I graduated from the Royal Academy, ha ha ha. You know, that sort of like having a diploma. <laughs> a degree <laughs> anyways and this whole time princess floor is mad she's like no rio saved me and they're like oh no he must have pushed you oh that's horrible that's a crime and that's why he jumped off the cliff too because he didn't he couldn't bear to have that crime on him so he you know suicide i don't think they thought he survived but if he survived he would be punished and such da, da, da. well real did survive he used wind magic he cushioned into his landing now during this whole thing someone was watching them the guy with the red eyes the one that had the red jewel and crushed it to get rid of assassin the one that got the information out of that drunk guy from the last episode he was watching the whole thing observing real seeing what he can do and it, he liked what he saw he set up the whole thing basically so he was able to create this trail to give to a soldier who was part of the gray-haired kid's kingdom that soldier gave that map to the gray-haired kid and the gray-haired kid is like okay let's use this map this whole thing was set up the goblins the orcs in another creature came about i forgot the name of it but it looked like a minotaur that thing came out which is what i'm gonna go into next this made rio pop out rio was just gonna walk away yeah he was just gonna walk away but then princess flora was in danger and rio's like oh i must save her and he saves her it was cool we got to see rio in action like real action not like minor stuff with humans no with big ass monsters he's using the spirit arts he embodied himself with the mana he strengthened his body he's doing really good and then the minotaur like creature he threw up his arms like he was gonna like swipe down 
Rio saw it as an opportunity. He went in for the kill, cut off its head. Oh yeah. And no one saw it. No one saw it. Princess Floor, she was too busy taking away an injured person who she healed before, which is why she got caught with a minotaur. <laughs> And the people who were looking for Princess Flora didn't see at all. They had tunnel vision. They only saw Princess Flora. And while they were distracted with her, Rio just walks away. Then they cut into a scene with the guy with red eyes who's behind this whole thing being like, Oh, I saw something interesting. This was worth it. And that's how we know that he set everything up. And that's how we know that Rio was using spirit arts. The guy was like, Oh, he must be from Yagumo. The people of Yagumo, they use spirit arts. And uh, it's like, okay, we got answers. Don't like it that I'm hearing it from an antagonist-like person, but I'm glad I'm getting some answers. Cool, all right. Fast forward to when they're reporting to the higher ups that Rio pushed Princess Flora and Rio's being blamed and the guy was gray hair that kid he's telling the story and the one who's supporting the story backing him up the ex vice captain guy the one that tortured Rio the one that got beat at that tournament like thing in episode 2 he backed up that kid oh shady 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 and the one that they were reporting to he seemed like he was against the monarchs the royalty because he was saying that the you know, royalty is weak and such and Rio was brought into the royal Ca academy because of the king so it seems like this guy is going to use this against the king somehow like maybe break down the credibility be like oh the king's not Incredible because he sent this commoner to this rebel academy and endangered his own daughter. Maybe something like that was gonna happen. Maybe not. But it seems like something, like some type of conspiracy is going on. But I don't care. All I care about is Rio. And Rio is gonna leave. And they just made an enemy out of him. He's gonna be super awesome and powerful. We know that because he's the protagonist. He's gonna be very, very special he's going to be needed he's going to be vital for something and fortunately he still has some allies we know princess flora like some princess christina knows what really happened and her friend with the blonde hair she knows what's going on and we got celia celia who's the teacher and Rio sees her before he leaves and we see some moments between them. It totally looks like they're going to end up together eventually. They have like that bond and we can tell that Celia cares for him a lot and we can see Rio cares for her. It looks like he views her like a little sister. Looks like it. I'm not too sure. Maybe he just views her as a savior because she's taught him so much, prepared him for this world and before they part, he promises that he'll write her letters so they're going to stay in contact and Celia does feel like she's powerless like she wishes she could help Rio like do something clear his name or something and I'm thinking because of this this is going to drive her to be more powerful to have a better standing in this kingdom some way where she can be like well if you don't do this and i'm gonna leave you know have some leverage on her where in the future if rio does come back and this quote crime quote comes about she can be like well he didn't really push her and if you don't believe me then i'll leave now at the end of the episode uh ex vice captain i i don't remember his name i don't care to remember his name i don't like him he meets up with this person in a jail cell, throws in a clothing, and this person has like ears, we know this is a beast person, and tells this person to look for Rio and assassinate him. And we see who it is, and she's one of the girls in the opening, so I'm predicting that she goes out to assassinate Rio. 
somehow he frees her from whatever is making her being controlled by that ex-vice captain guy and she's going to be a companion to him that's what i'm thinking which concludes this review of spirit chronicles episode three what do you think about that episode if you saw it if you haven't seen it what do you think about this video let me know in the comments below and if you want to talk outside of youtube here's a discord link is in the description i also stream on twitch.tv slash leho super gonna people watch these videos do you like to stop by the stream have a one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation you guys are welcome Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description, free available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lee Hula, and this is a Super Fina channel reviewing Spirit Chronicles Episode 3. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Super Fina party, you can click over here or become a channel member don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video and i do stream live on twitch every tuesdays thursdays and saturdays hope to see you guys there and i will see you on the next video this bump